it's been a very interesting missiological experience. Um, first of all, we brought together a lot of partners in SAT7. We have about 30 different agencies and churches, ranging from Baptists, Pentecostals, and Lutherans, and Catholics. And they've gotten together on specific projects where they found common ground. Um, and they've discovered each other. I remember one of our Swedish Pentecostal brothers who was astonished that he found himself working with Sat7 alongside of Swedish Lutherans and British Baptists, and he said, and an Austri Austrian Catholic. And he said, this is amazing, it's so wonderful. I wish I could sort of see this reality of church unity or unity in the body back in my home country of Sweden. But it goes further than that. We've also been able to do the same with the Orthodox and the Catholics and the Protestants in the Middle East. And it's been quite interesting also for them to discover the Western agencies with all their different denominational stripes and colors and for everyone to meet each other within the context of a network like this or our international council. And I remember a conversation we were having about my own job, you know, what are the qualifications for a CEO uh, for a succession plan? And so the Swedish Pentecostals and the Western Lutherans and the others were coming with all this criteria. And then a Catholic bishop who serves on our board, an older man who's struggling to work in English because that's his third language or fourth language after French and Arabic and Latin, he stands up and says, excuse me, my brothers, what is the role of the Holy Spirit in this process? And immediately all these kind of Western evangelicals were rebuked, you know, for their very secular approach to this rather sacred process of finding new leadership.